In my attempt to do this, folks, uh, I do fancy screen recording and stuff, but it's a little too much for me today. Our red trace, I've got hooked to the generator sense wire. So right now it's holding about 14 and a half volts, 14.3. Um, that's the wire going to the alternator that that it's going to use for a reference, we'll say, for lack of a better term. Alternator's going to look at that and say, hey, I'm putting out, you know, X amount. How much is it really putting out? You know, how much am I getting? So this basically is just letting the alternator know, hey, I'm at 14 point whatever volts or 15 volts. The blue trace is this generator duty cycle, the alternator duty cycle, which is currently off. And... <sighs> Nissan service data sucks to say the least, but I did look and um, it does describe how that system works. Uh, when the instrument panel calls for a higher voltage or more alternator output, so to speak, then it turns on this alternator duty cycle. Otherwise it works in normal mode, not power mode. It's a, it's a fuel economy strategy they have. And then our green trace is the alternator case ground because if we're losing case ground, we can lose, um, it, it'll, tr it'll screw up the other part of the sense voltage. So if we lose case ground, it can drive the voltage super high. Uh, that's usually the most common cause for an alternator overcharging is just, you know, poor ground in a sense circuit type system. So I'm going to take it for a drive, see if we can catch it in the act, and then, you know, see if we just have a bad alternator or if we're losing signal sense or it's pulling the duty cycle right straight to ground and making it overcharge like crazy. I don't know. So it's kind of hard to do all this at once. Uh, well, looking at all this stuff and driving and not dying like that kind of thing. So I think the pattern of this is, is to pull over after you've been driving it for a little bit, wait a minute or so, and then take back off. That's when it seems to be the most consistent. Now I did notice when I was driving back there and I was slowing down and then speeding up, I did get it to do it one time where the voltage went up to like 15.7 just briefly. And I didn't see any anomalies over here other than high voltage. My battery light came on, flickered, did its thing, car act kind of stupid, and then away we went. I think we're going to find that we simply have a bad alternator. Uh, it wasn't being commanded at any point, uh, you know, where it was in its, you know, power reduction mode or whatever you want to call it uh, I'd have to I gotta look up that theory on that for you folks uh, the alternator seems to be a self-contained regulation system using a sense wire the case ground the L wire for the light and then the blue trace that we have that is this alternator duty cycle gives the cluster I think it came from the from the cluster it picks up its information from the data network and then sends it out to the alternator to put it in, you know, performance charging type mode. I think we simply have a bad alternator. Uh, when it was acting stupid, the one I was paying attention to was our green trace, making sure our ground wasn't elevated and it wasn't. But I'd like to get a good moment where it's really screwing up and I can pause it and say, yeah, boom, you know, we're right. Needs an alternator, move on with our day. Well, this is just as frustrating AF. I get this sucker to act up again. I've done it twice now. The second time when I reached over to pause my uh, screen recorder, or not the screen recorder, but the Pico, I hit the space bar twice. So it paused it and then started off again. So I lost that on you the first time. I just never even paused it because I thought for sure we were going to get to do it twice or three times. Uh, eventually here, I'm just going to have to make the call. I've seen it with my own eyes, but I like to be able to prove stuff to you because you guys have trust issues with me. I think we do. As the chief mechanic parts changer slash owner, I've made an executive decision to purchase an alternator and a belt and then replace it. We could probably drive this thing around a lot and spend lots of time, 100% getting you guys a perfect screenshot and showing you, but you're gonna have to trust me. I saw it with my papers. I know you guys think I'm lying because I'm smirking. That's what my mom always said. But uh, I'm not, I feel very confident in that. If that's not it, I don't know at this point, but that is a great question to ask yourself. If what you plan on doing doesn't fix it, what are you gonna do next? And you should have already done that. And I think I have, I think I've covered all those bases. Where, when I saw it acting up, I wasn't losing a ground. The PCM wasn't commanding anything extra on the blue trace. So um, remember I told you that's that power management, uh, fuel economy, 
gizmo. Doesn't really matter how it works. The fact that it wasn't commanding it on to charge higher or more volt, more current is a good thing because now we know we're just still dealing with the base alternator system. It's internally regulated regulator <laughs> for that matter. And that's all it can be. Nothing else was commanding it. We weren't losing a case ground. And those are the only things, in my opinion, that can make it go high. Now, some people are thinking like, well, you clamped onto the alternator down there with the ground, and then over here with the ground, maybe by clamping on your ground, you clamped on the alternator and the bracket there by repairing the ground. But I made sure I didn't do that. I clamped on the alternator case only. So, I'm confident. I got one ordered. It's not gonna be here until tomorrow afternoon, but that's the best napper can do. And uh, you guys are just gonna have to wait and see. We're gonna need this, folks. Alternator is on. The new belt is on. We're getting us a 10 day sticker so we can go drive it because it fails inspection. So we need to put in the date here so we can get us a 10 day. I'm gonna get one chance of this in the PRNY. Uh, so we'll get us a 10 day so we can go drive this sucker legally. The registration on it is good. So uh, once that prints out, we're gonna go take it for a shakedown and see if we were right. We better tell Mrs. O, hey young lady, we're going for a drive. BRB. Stick this little guy up here. Now we're legal, plus we got the cop sticker. And then uh, we'll stick this back on the inspection machine. Okay, folks. Oh, man, I gotta turn off that AC. I had the AC cranking because we had to recharge it. Because the alternators are super easy to do on these. Said no one ever. You gotta pull the god dang it. AC compressor off to do them. So we'll get her outside here and let her warm up a bit. Oh, here's the note from the, uh, uh, yeah, the Kia dealer, the uh, Nissan dealer. A very famous Nissan dealer located in Rochester. Uh, let's see here. This says, uh, manufacturer, manufacturer recommended service electrical. Customer has had ABS wheel speed sensors replaced on 1223. Vehicle warning light flashed on when customer turned right. Caused, caused by. The vehicle was incorrectly diagnosed on repair order such and such. The lead tech diagnosed an internal failure in the engine room harness. It would need to have the entire harness replaced. Customer declined repairs. Wow. Anyhow, so that's that. That's from the Nissan dealer. So let's get uh, the data pulled up on the screen. Now that we've talked about the 10 days, how to get them. We're going to look at uh, the voltage. And then we're just going to drive it. So right now it's idling at 13.5 volts up here on the corner of the scan tool. I'm um, sorry I didn't bring you along on the Diag. It's been a little uh, crazy today. And uh, we just need to get her out of here. Immediately I see a difference because look at an idle. Before our charging voltage, I want to say, was near 14 volts. Um, our alternator right now is duty cycling at 42%. So that's quite interesting. Before it was at zero. And that's, that's odd that it, can, that it has a sense circuit. It has control of it but it doesn't throw a code for it which is kind of kind of crazy you would think that it would notice uh, abnormality in there and throw a code I would think but in this case it doesn't I think it can detect that uh, duty cycle signal wire if there's a short in it I think or open circuited perhaps because I, I do know it does have the ability to throw codes for the generator um, okay, so anyhow, this is what it is. Let's go for a rip and uh, see how we make out. All right, so far so good, folks. I'm extremely confident that we have it repaired. Um, what I'm gonna do, I wanna see if we can get a full drive suck out. We're down to just two monitors left. We've only been four miles. Um, I'm gonna keep the car overnight I think she wants some more work done to it. It's got some clunky sway bar links on it. Just starting to get a little bit of rattle in the front and a little rattle in the rear. 
I believe she wants that stuff fixed too. Well, there we go, we're down to just one monitor now. So we've ran enough of a drive cycle to get a legal state inspection now. Um, you can't fail New York State for having loose sway bar links. They have to be broken. Uh, thankfully, otherwise, like, every car would fail. <laughs> so we're gonna head back to the shop here. We'll just jump on the highway, but uh, the voltage has been just rock solid. And the car hasn't missed a beat. Obviously, no, you know, no speed sensor codes or anything. And oddly enough, too, um, no codes at all. No pending codes, nothing. Uh, we were getting that one there for the... Um, intake tuning valve uh, must be that was a product of you know the wonky voltages uh, for whatever reason because I see that has not come back pending or current so that's good um, but the lady did mention you know prior to having the issue with it you know doing its thing she wasn't having any problems prior to that so I guess this is it it's kind of a silly fix so this lady will be happy the only thing she won't be happy about is that she already lost over a thousand dollars at the Nissan dealership, which they should be a little bit embarrassed. This was not a difficult diagnosis. Um, their service data kind of led me a little astray with the theory and operation on the alternator and how that functions. Uh, but in either case, that's it. You know, no, I don't know what to say. Shame on you, Nissan. That's what I say. But anyhow. Um, what I need you to do is go down in that comments and say something to me about what you think. Do you think the Nissan dealer should give this lady her money back or she should just move on with life? I think she should get refunded and an apology and just say, hey, sorry, lady, we were just guessing. But anyhow, you let me know down there the questions, the comments, the concerns you have. We're on the Insta. We're on the Facebook. You know where to find us. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Forgot to point at you. Thanks for watching. Bonus footage. <laughs> I just pulled in the shop and I actually ran the EVAP monitor. So all the monitors are complete. No codes. Charging steady. It's all good, baby. It's all good.